News.com.au, 14th of April 2024, China's significant action to sever access to premium Australian iron ore. After pressuring Australia, China is seeking an alternative to Australian iron ore to de-risk itself. However, the open seas will pose a future threat to China. It is distant, not reachable, and of inadequate quality. However, Beijing is resolute in its intention to allocate substantial resources to a mine in the Sahara Desert as a means of de-risking itself from iron ore from Australia. China Railway Construction Corp Limited CRCC, is a prominent multinational engineering and construction conglomerate on a global scale. It is under the jurisdiction of the State Council's State-Owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission of the Chinese Communist Party. Presently, 6,000 kilometers of new railway lines are being laid across the Algerian desert in North Africa. The crux of the matter is granting Bau, a steel conglomerate owned by Beijing, authority over the Garajabilit mine. Notwithstanding the deposit's phosphorus content exceeding eight times the permissible threshold, a mineral that undermines the strength of steel manufactured from iron ore, this remains the case. Its removal is an extraordinarily polluting and energy-intensive procedure. The Chinese Communist Party-controlled South China Morning Post, on the other hand, reports that these obstacles have been conquered, thereby reviving the feasibility of enormous investments in the mine and related infrastructure. This week's report by the SCMP states, China is presently highly reliant on Australia and Brazil for its iron ore, which is the principal raw material utilized in steel production. Beijing hopes that the approximately 3.5 billion tons of reserves at the Garja Billet Mine will contribute to the diversification of its energy sources. China is the leading steel producer globally, with a production volume of 1 billion tons in the year 2022 exclusively. This also makes it the largest importer of iron ore in the globe. Additionally, approximately 70% of the ore is extracted within Australia, rendering it the primary source of revenue for exports from Canberra. Due to their codependence, Beijing and Canberra are susceptible to diplomatic and economic maneuvering. A multipolar investment strategy. Algeria is highly motivated to identify an alternative revenue stream in the coming decade as the worldwide demand for oil reaches its zenith to reduce detrimental carbon dioxide emissions. A 6,000-kilometer railway will connect the remote and difficult-to-reach mine to neighboring communities, transportation infrastructure, and harbors. However, that was only a component of a $36 billion investment agreement that was ratified late last year in Beijing during Algerian President Abdel Majid Tebboune's visit to Chairman Xi Jinping. President Tebboune stated, Our Chinese allies have agreed to this endeavor. To facilitate the exploitation of mines, promote trade, and stimulate Algeria's economy. China considers Algeria a gateway to Africa. Both parties stand to benefit from this partnership, Algerian lawmaker said Hamsi added. Reportedly, preparations for a 575-kilometer stretch of the new railway line connecting the Garja Billet mine in the west of the nation to the Bashar Industrial Center in the northwestern region, close to the Morocco border, have already commenced. In the interim, Chairman Xi Jinping conveyed his displeasure to U.S. President Joe Biden last week, asserting that Western efforts to de-risk their economies in light of Beijing's history of economic coercion were creating risk. Zaya reportedly stated in a Chinese translation of the conversation, if the United States side is willing to seek mutually beneficial cooperation and share in China's development dividends, it will always find China's door open. However, China will not remain passive if it is determined to impede its legitimate right to development and stifle its high-tech advancements. With a steely resolve, iron ore futures have strengthened in the past week, propelling prices back above $100 per ton. However, this is propelled primarily by renewed speculation. Beijing will be compelled to infuse the Chinese economy with enormous stimulus funds. China Industrial Futures stated earlier this week that China's steel mills are gradually resuming blast furnace operations following an increase in profits. If such a stimulus is implemented, demand for both construction and manufacturing has the potential to improve. For more than a year, markets have speculated on the existence and nature of such an economic stimulus emanating from Beijing. However, Beijing has not yet implemented substantial policies, reforms, or financial indicators. Consequently, the demand for iron ore, the fundamental component of steel used in the construction and manufacturing of tall buildings, has decreased significantly. However, Beijing's intention to redirect the iron ore it obtains further complicates Canberra's long-term consequences. This is already apparent in the latest investment data disclosed this week.
In 2023, Chinese investment in Australia decreased by 36% to 1.34 billion Australian dollars. In 2022, it reached 2.1 billion Australian dollars. According to the University of Sydney slash KPMG Australia report demystifying Chinese investment in Australia, a significant portion of this decline can be attributed to Australia's mining sector. Co-author Professor Hans Hendrischk of the University of Sydney Business School asserts, the emergence of Chinese-funded mining and processing ventures in alternative markets, such as Southeast Asia, exacerbates these dynamics through the creation of competitive pressures and the diversion of attention from Australian opportunities. Helen G. Dent, a KPMG partner and co-author of the report, adds, this reflects the shift in priorities for Chinese ODI, which is increasingly flowing towards Belt and Road Initiative countries and mining and processing ventures in alternative markets, such as Southeast Asia. Furthermore, despite the report highlighting China's resurgence in interest regarding Australian agricultural products and food, the sector has been sluggish in its reaction after Beijing's coercive tariffs implemented in response to the COVID-19 pandemic.